Okay, so today we're going to talk about uh, what's been referred to as the Monty Hall problem. It's, it's a game of strategy. And uh, so it is Monty Hall. He had the game show Let's Make a Deal back in the 60s and 70s. And um, it actually became popular, this Monty Hall problem, in the uh, movie 21 with Kevin Spacey there. He asked one of his students, he brought it up, and the student got it correct. And uh, thought the guy was a genius and brought him you know, to the old card shark uh, scam they had going in Vegas there. And um, I, I ran across it, uh, not through 21, even though I've watched a movie, I didn't really take much notice of that little segment there. But there was a, na a name of this woman called uh, Marilyn Vossavant, and she was, I was just looking through, like, you know, intelligent people throughout history, and she came up as, like, being extremely intelligent, one of the most intelligent women that ever lived. Uh, probably the, who knows. But anyway, um, she uh, made the Monty Hall problem famous because she had a column called Ask Marilyn and they asked her this question of strategy and she said it was, you know, uh, better to switch, better to switch. And we'll get, we'll get into the problem in a minute, the, the actual gameplay, and you can see why Marilyn was correct. Uh, she had a lot of backlash. Thousands of people wrote in and said, no, 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 no it's 50-50. So, so let's get stuck into how this works. So you'll understand what I'm talking about. So here we go. So we've got Monty, Monty Hall there and he's got three doors. So behind one of the doors is a prize, like a, a new car. And behind the other two doors is like a just a crap prize, like a goat. We'll just call it a goat because everyone calls it a goat. Uh, there's always a car and a goat in these ones. So we'll stick, with the, we'll stick with the convention here. We'll call it car in one of the doors, goat in the other two. So we'll switch, uh, I'll switch to my phone now and I'll show you how it works. So we've got three doors, and I've loaded the doors up already. So let's let's assume uh, you know you ask the contestant, oh, which door do you want do you want to pick for the car?" And they pick door number one. All right. Now the the trick to understanding this problem is Monty actually knows where the car is, right? So what he does next, he goes, "Okay, I'm going to reveal one of the doors." And he reveals, say, let's say, door number two. Yep. Let's open door number two. And there's a little goat there. And it's like, oh, there we go. Good thing you didn't do pick door number two because you would have got a goat. And now, now, comes the, now comes the Monty Hall problem. He goes, okay, I'll give you a choice. Do you want to stick with door number one, your original choice, or do you want to switch to door number three? All right, so door, door number two's out. And most people sort of think, well, oh, hang on a minute. What's the, what's the difference if I switch? It's 50, 50 percent chance of, of getting getting the prize. And most people will stay. They'll stay with their original choice, door number one. Because they sort of think, oh God, if I switch and the car's behind door number one, I'm going to regret it my whole life. I should have stuck with my gut instinct. Now, people will sort of think they can predict things and they've got a gut instinct and they know best. They don't think logically in these situations. But... So, so, the, so she sticks with it, and say the contestant's a woman, she sticks with it, and then Monty, Monty goes, oh, okay, well, you're sticking with door number one, well, if you've picked door number three, you would have got a, a goat, well, you've won a brand new La Ferrari, <laughs> which wouldn't have been around in the 60s, but anyway, this is a modern version, and you've won your car, congratulations, and everyone's happy, you know, and that, that, they just... Uh, perpetuates the myth that you should have stuck with your original original um, game plan. But let's look at this logically. We'll get rid of the doors and I'll explain why you should switch every time. So okay, say you pick door number one, right? Now Monty's got Monty's got uh, either he can reveal door number two, we'll put the doors here so you can see him. He can either reveal door number two or door number three. Now he's got he can't reveal door number one because she's already picked it. Alright, so in this case you're gonna lose. Okay. So let's let's try it again. Say the car's in door number two. And you pick door number one again. And Monty Monty goes, well hang on. I know I know the car's in door number two. I've got to reveal door number three. So he reveals door number three, and we're back to this problem again with the doors. And the people think, oh now he reveals door number three. To the goat, he goes. Oh, hang on a minute. 
I've got a 50-50 chance. Gut instinct. I'll pick door number one again. All right, villa's door number one. Boom, you've lost. It's a go. Same thing with door number three. So if the car's in door number three, you pick door number one. Monty knows the car's in door number three, so he's going to pick door, reveal door number two. All right, so if you switched, you would have got the car. The same with if it was here. If you switched, you would have got the car here as well. So really, the, the way to understand this is Monty's actually, he's got inside information. He's actually reducing your odds by telling you <laughs> which, which, door, which door the car isn't in two-thirds of the time. All right, so when it's in door number one, he's forced. He's forced to. Uh, to not, he can't reveal it to you because you, you've actually picked it. So he can't increase your odds in, in door number one. If you if the car's in door number one, you pick door number one. Right. So people, you're probably all scratching your heads here. It's like, okay, I've got a better way to explain this. Let's go through. We'll create a chart, and I'll explain this to you. So let's go. Um, your pick, and then we'll have the prize, and then we'll have a win. If you uh, stick, we we'll call it stick with the original one, or if you switch. All right, so let's have a look here. So let's go. Uh, so we've got if you pick number one, and the prize is in number one. <clears throat> If you stick, if you stick with your decision, you win. So I'll put a yes for win. If you switch, no. <laughs> and we'll go through the different ones. One, one, one. Uh, so three possibilities for each one. Two, 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 three, three, three. So three possibilities. Because a prize. Oh, let's see if we can. Hopefully we've got to get it this here. Okay. So the prize is either going to be in one. Two or three, and then with this one is door number two. It's still going to be in one, two, or three. The prize, one, two, or three. So you've got you've basically got nine possibilities. So let's let's go through this logically. So if you pick uh, door number one, the prize is number two. If you stick, you lose. So your win is no. But if you switch, you win because Monty's Monty reveals uh, door number three. Has nothing in it, all right? It's got the goat, so you're gonna pick num door number two when you switch, and you win. And once again, if you pick door number one, the prize is in door number three. If you stick with it, you'll lose because it's in number three, and you pick number one. But if you switch, whoops. But if you switch, you will win, all right? Okay, so let's run through the second one. So if you've picked door number two, if the prize is in one. If you stick with your stick with your decision, no win. If you switch, yes. You can see the pattern here. Door number two, two. If you stick, you win. If you switch, you lose. Uh, pick door number two, the prize is number three. If you stick, you lose. So no win. If you switch, you win. So yes for the win. So if if you pick door number three, the prize is in door number one. If you switch, you lose. If you switch, if you pick, if you stick, you lose. If you switch, you win. And so the only time you're going to win is no, and then no, and yes. So if you add up, if you add them all up right at the end, if you stick with the original decision, you'll win one, two, three times. Three times out of nine, which is one third. And if you switch, you'll win one, two, three, four, five, six, six times out of nine, which is two thirds of the time. So you've just doubled your chances of winning if you switch. So there we go, guys. Hope you hope you understand understood that. Uh, I've seen a few videos on this, and a lot of times they don't explain it properly. Uh, I think it was. Uh, What's that numer numerology one, the famous one, and uh, they explained it by trying to concentrate the concentrate the percentages. Now it's like, mm, no, it's better. It's better to show the chart, which I've shown now. 
and that explains it really well. All the different permutations, what we call it in probability, all the permutations, the results, and you've got your probabilities right down the bottom. Very easy to, very easy to follow, and hopefully this explains it all to you. So uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, share this one around because I reckon it's really cool this problem, and I want more people to see it. Uh, I'll probably send it to my sister. She's a maths teacher. We'll get her to uh, show her students in class, and I'll see you next time, guys. Cheers.